Welcome to Chandwell. My name is Michael, and I'm building an inner city viaduct based N gauge layout set in a fictional run down Yorkshire town in 1993. Over the last couple of years, Chandwell has developed a life and personality of its own. I thought I'd make a video to share my vision for the layouts next year or so and explain how Chandwell has the feeling of a real place when I think of it. Join me then for A Sense of Place, a layout's vision. Each building I have added has contributed to the overall atmosphere of the layout and I think a genuine sense of place is starting to emerge from the pieces of glued card and paper. I base all of my buildings on real buildings in and around Yorkshire, and Bradford in particular. This helps them seem cohesive as they tend to already belong together. Chandwell is an inner city station which never had goods facilities. The goods yard was off over the branch to Chandfield, just before Chandwell Riverside Station. This means that the current Chandwell station would have been squeezed into the smallest piece of land available to its Victorian engineers. My biggest inspiration in this regard is the eastern exit of Leeds station. The tracks are up on a viaduct but are hemmed in on both sides by tall old buildings. From street level, you'd never know there was a railway there if it wasn't for the bridges bursting out from between buildings, complete with a little dingy alleys running alongside. If I'm to pull off this atmosphere, then I need to build tall either side of the tracks. The most recent mocked up half buildings along the layout front are the initial test of this, and this leads to some interesting questions about viewing the layout. These mock ups look tall and they take a bit of getting used to. It's not typical for a layout to have tall buildings in front of the tracks. However, as I walk past the layout, they are already invoking a feeling of being able to peer down into a hidden world containing the railway. From a standing position, I can see everything in my model the tracks, signal box, and most importantly, the back of Market Street. Tests with my camera have shown the potential of fabulous and atmospheric panning shots that just peek over the rooftops and glimpse the signal box in all its glory. I am really excited about this. Once Station Road is populated with the Nags Head, Sweaty Ron's Video Shop, Chandwell Best Kebab, the Job Centre and Cath's Cuts, this view up the street towards Station Parade will be spectacular. Chandwell is stuck firmly into my house. There are only 19 people on earth who have ever seen Chandwell for real. It's not designed to be a traditional viewing layout in that sense. I look at it every day and I love the little bits that you really have to squint to see. The advertising hoardings under the Bridge Lane Skew Bridge are almost impossible to see, but I know that they're there. It was always my intention that the businesses under the arches of Station Alley would be almost completely hidden, but peer over the Crescent Hotel in just the right way and there they will be, a hidden reward for really delving into the layout. And because the camera can be placed anywhere, even the backs of the buildings, impossible to see by eye, can come to life. This graffiti and awful 1970s fire escapes cannot be seen by human eyes. Nothing is truly obscured or hidden. Equally important is the imagined history of Chandwell, and pieces of it occasionally come out in my videos. By keeping track of the town's colourful history, a thread of realism helps guide every decision I make when deciding what to build and how to present it. I'm Silas Bickerdyke, and I'm going to take you on a tour, the Royal Scot, and tell the story of the hotel which shaped a town. Chandwell, then, now! Chandwell is populated by characters who surface from time to time in my videos. The most famous is Chandwell's favourite celebrity, Brittany Scroggins. Hello, I'm Brittany Scroggins. Whose tireless work for the Chandwell Tourist Board is well renowned. But we also have Silas Bickerdyke of the Chandwell Historical Society. And lesser known characters like Wendy, the formidable landlady of the Weir. Dame Flora Turpin who invented the dessert Rhubarb Turpin in the Royal Scot. And snooker sensation Jack the Breeze Sharpner, who drunkenly climbed Rosebeck Bridge and had to be rescued. This cast of characters helps weave realism into my layout and guides me when deciding how to shape the model. I just use my mobile phone to make my videos. It can get into parts of the layout that my giant head can't. There is no part of the layout which is inaccessible. So having a row of tall buildings on this side of the track matters not. I can film in many different ways and choose what story to tell. 
The archers here occupy a small and dingy back street, just as they would in a real place like Chandwell. Leaving them open to view would be false to my vision and would subtract from the feeling and atmosphere of Chandwell. Here the trains will burst out between the tall buildings, cross the bridge and vanish again, just as they do in Leeds. But from the tops of the roofs, it will all be seen in its true scale, and I find that very exciting. Please join me then on my journey as I build Station Road, starting with the Crescent Hotel. There are many more stories to tell, and who knows, maybe many more characters to meet. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.